Jumping joyfully toward your destiny is what life is all about. Welcome to the Destiny Culture Podcast, where you'll create a destiny culture in a simple ABCD format so that confusion, exhaustion, and paralyzation don't win. Today, we are on episode number two, and I am Tracy Warren, your host, along with our other team uncoached hosts, Amber McDaniel and Melissa Kessler. And today we are going to be talking all about Awaken. Awaken is the first phase within the expansion cycle, which we lovingly call ABCD, but it it is really an a process for expansion that creates a destiny culture. So we really want to bring an education, an enlightenment, a training to you on what the heck is Awaken all about and how can you begin to incorporate it into your own life. It can be in any part of life and you will find that it pops up everywhere for you, the more that you learn about this entire ABCD process. It is very, very simple, um, but we want to dive a little bit deeper with you today into the phase of Awaken. And um, Amber, why don't you share with them just a tiny bit about how it is that we recognized that Awaken is the first phase of the process and what we did about that once we had that realization. Yeah, sure. So good morning. (laughs) If you're listening in the morning, (laughs) Um, I am just really excited to be here and share um, about this because of how so much of a profound impact that it has had on Tracy and my life. And now, and Melissa, you know, she's going to be sharing a part of her story and the women that come into our space that we get to share this with. Um, and it's like a daily, it's a daily thing where women are having revelation. And so, um, that started with that a revelation is what we had when we had our first awaken retreat. And, um, we realized, wow, how powerful it was to getting still, but not only that, but getting out of our comfort zone and um, being away from the everyday normal hustle, bustle, got to get this done, got to get the kids to school, got to do this. When we were away from that and things were still and things were quiet, it was like, Whoa, God, I can hear your voice. Whoa, God, I can see you. Whoa, God, I can feel you. And so that I think just being at the retreat as I mean, we were facilitating it. um, But we even had our own awaken experience at our awaken retreat. And so that's where it all began for us. um, And we realized how powerful and impactful it was. I know I want to, that was really the first time that it sort of impacted our mission and business process moving forward. For me, Awaken started in my home where the Lord was speaking and said, come rest, Mm -hmm. be still. And that was on the heels of a super busy, intense hustling season where I ended up with great income, exceeded my husband's income at the time, but it came at a cost of stage four adrenal fatigue and sleeping multiple times a day while I was trying to homeschool the kids. And that leads to a lack of fulfillment. And so that was where God met me was in that place of exhaustion, in the place of lacking fulfillment, in the place of confusion, like, why am I working so hard for this? In a place of frustration and lacking clarity, because it's not supposed to be this way. But Mm -hmm. I was doing everything that I was told by all the experts to do. And so then it leaves you with that feeling of what's wrong with me? If I'm doing what everybody says to do, why is this not working? And so that was really where the Lord met me on my patio um, with my Bible open and crying out in desperation, like, what is, what is, what gives, you know? And um, that was the instruction. Come, 
rest, be still. And as we had in, incorporated this concept of awaken into our CEO flow program, that was when we met Melissa and she was already a health hormone specialist. And so that part for me was like, oh, ding, ding, ding. She get she automatically would naturally get that part of my story. She would understand and she would resonate with why we really want that entire concept of unhustling, if you will, to be part of our uh, process, whether it's in CEO flow, that program, or simply working with our clients in general, because it's central, you know, like you can't have one part without having that part. You can't have, um, whatever you define success as while being completely exhausted and unhealthy essentially. So Melissa, why don't you share with them kind of, um, what it ha- what the awaken phase has meant for you probably before even coming to realize that it was the what we call the awaken phase and now that you've put a label to it what that has meant for you as well yeah that's so good uh, I, I love that you wound up saying that because as i'm even sitting here listening i'm thinking to myself okay I went through this before I even knew you and before I had even become part of Uncoached or even joined as a client. Um, But I went through the really the exact same experience and it was exactly that um, of so many years of hustling and grinding because it's what the world was telling me I needed to do to find success. And um, I got to that same point of extreme severe adrenal fatigue where I just didn't want to do anything anymore. Um, I had just put so much into all that I was doing for so long that it was just this point. And not that God told me be, be still, but he told me rest. And that was exactly what I heard every single time that I wanted to get up out of bed, but just couldn't do it. (laughs) Um, And he just kept saying, you need to rest, you need to rest. And I didn't think that was okay. You know, it's like you, you get this feeling of like, if I'm resting and not doing anything, I'm not doing the right things. Like something's not right when you're doing this. Although I wound up, I had to listen. I had no choice, but to listen. And that is, it's really great because that's when I decided I had to make a change in what I was doing. And then that's when I met you and heard about Awaken. And I'm like, yes, like this is exactly what he was telling me I need to do. And what's really awesome is that I had no idea what was coming for me. I had no idea I would be joining Uncoached. I had no idea it would become a team effort. And it was like, it almost was like everything I had been searching for, but wasn't really searching for it. Like, didn't know it's what I was searching for. (laughs) So it's just so amazing how when you go through the awaken process that God gives you things that you don't even know you need in your life. And I think that's pretty much like what was confirmed for me once, you know, once I became part of Uncoached and was able to really simplify all of the things that I had been trying so hard for all along. That's awesome. And it was, I will just say, it was so cool to watch unfold, you know, because we can see it happening, but you can't, well, you can force people along, but it's just not nearly as beneficial to them. And it's way more fun to watch, at, you know, as a, as a leader or a coach or whatever. Um, Amber, I know for sure that Awaken is very much a time of inhaling the Lord's presence and simply being. And then as we move next into the belief phase, that's more about the exhale and the the doing, you know, with whatever we've received from the Lord during Awaken. Would you share with our listeners a little bit about some of the components that may show up for them that they may want to experience during Awaken? That they may want to experience? Mm -hmm. Because we know as we were were talking, there are not going to be concrete steps 
Right. There's a lot of people that really want check A, check the box with the next one, check the box with the next one, boom, boom, boom. I'm done. I'm moving on to the next. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you lose the entire beauty of the awaken process because awaken is not forced. Awaken is not to be forced. It is about inhaling so that you can have that space. It's almost like the space between breaths, really, where mm -hmm. you're, where everything becomes still and you, um, your mind is calm again, so that you can hear the whisper, you know, hear that whisper. So what are some things that we like to, uh, I'm going to say do, but whether it's meditation or, um, breathing or, you know, all of those different little things that we, we like to experience during awaken that people almost like a little awaken menu that they can choose yeah. from to put themselves in a place of awaken more easily and allow God to move. I'm remembering a time, a very specific awaken time. And my trigger, um, was like, you know, that frustration you get in your chest where things are just not going well. And you're like, I was supposed to get this done today. Nothing is going as planned. And I remember feeling that anxiety and the frustration in my chest. And I was like, oh, I have to get still. <laughs> and so there's triggers within that actually trigger you into awaken, especially when you're first starting out and getting used to it. Um, and so it's <clears throat> being intentional and creating something that is repetitive for yourself that you're easily able to go back to. So whatever those things are for you. So for myself, it was, all right, I just need to sit on the couch next to my husband with my Bible. And so let's just start there, you know, and see what happens. <laughs> um, and so the word, of course, is one of those things that we utilize every moment of every day. Um, and then we like to also listen to, um, to get into a place of stillness uh, encounter podcast. And it, you can search that and find that. And they actually do meditations on the word and scripture, which is beautiful. Um, God has met me in a very profound way in those, in those podcasts. Um, and then um, for me, dancing, you know, like just getting in the presence of the Lord and whatever, you know, if you're, if you're being introduced to worship, you know, or you're not familiar with worship, um, just setting your heart up to receive. So if that means to be moving, if that means to be painting, if that means to be sitting and being focusing intentionally on your breathing, you know, just in and out and it is going to transform over time. You know, you're not going to be sitting to get into the awakened phase and move through the awakened phase just by breathing all the time. Like it's going, it's going to be different. So being open to um, morphing and changing and shifting and um, what's feeling good to you and the way that the Lord is leading you. Um, it's in those quiet places that, um, of course, you know, like we've talked about God speaks, but then we have room for creativity. And I'm even looking at something right here on my desk right now that came from a place of being still that we now get to gift our, our clients with. I think sometimes even creativity is the path yeah. that Absolutely. your stillness takes place in, you know, like I can imagine, um, it, uh, well, I was painting last night with my eight-year-old and it makes for me, even though I tried to find every excuse, I tried to find anybody else in the house basically that would do it with her <laughs> when it was finally me like, no, mom, I want to do it with you. Okay. Well then it made me sit down in one spot and be quiet. And it was mm -hmm. lovely, you know? So sometimes the creativity is the thing that normally we think the creativity is the end result, but actually it can be yeah. present in any one of these phases, right? So when we're talking awaken, we really are talking about an opportunity for you to be fueled, 
an opportunity for you to gain clarity, an opportunity for you to gain breakthrough, an opportunity for you to receive direction. Those are all places where, you know, you, if you're feeling like you need any of that, ding, 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 awaken is for you. Now, the wonderful and amazing thing about it is that as Amber referred to, it's probably coming on a daily basis. That need for it. So one of those things comes on a daily basis, but there are also seasons where we just in general need more of that in our marriage or in general, we need more of that in our business or in general, we need more of that for our health. You know, there are going to be these, these larger seasons and what we've seen kind of as, as the years have passed by and we've watched the process unfold for people, it really is about on the big scale, about a six month process. And then you may go through an awaken process within a week out of the month. And then you go through that awaken process, ideally every single morning, you know, you're doing these things or being in a position of receiving awakening every single day. So, um, as we did refer to in our first, first episode, you may be in awaken in one area of life and you may be in believe or captivate or dance in another area. So you're always, the more that you learn the ABCD process, the more easy it is to literally flow through your days and through your months, through your years uh, with ease and grace and abundance, which is what it's all about. That's the process of expansion, ABCD expand. Story. Let's talk a little bit about story. Uh, Melissa, you referred to your story a little bit when, when you were um, sharing. And as we gathered together for that very first Awaken retreat, awakening people to the value and the beauty in their story was a central theme of the entire weekend. And that was something that I realized the more that I was personally first learning what God had for me in Awaken, it was like, okay, why am I experiencing this? And I had to go through that period of wondering why so that I could have the awakening of purpose and then of calling. And so story, the theme of story will follow us through our A, B, C, and D. And during the awaken phase, it's really a matter of seeing that your story is beautiful. Even the hurt, even the pain, even the struggle, all of that has value and you have worth regardless of what you've been through. So there are women that come to us, clients, um, which by the way, the destiny culture is for everyone, not just for women. It is for business leaders. It is for ministry leaders, regardless of age, regardless of sex, regardless of anything. It is simply a process that can be applied to literally anyone and anything. But um, that, that story, Amber, why don't you share in a nutshell what the awaken process meant for your story? Um, well, it started actually before I, I keep talking about the retreat because that was like the catalyst for me. Um, but leading up to that, uh, the Lord kept pointing out the word joy to me. And I knew that if I saw, or it was impactful at least three times in a row that God was really trying to hone in on something. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, God, what are you trying to show me about joy? Because am I not joyful? Like I'm happy. I, I'm good. Like I'm joyful. And so then I got to the awaken retreat and I remember us being in, um, uh, you know, in a meditation time during, during that that weekend and the woman who was facilitating it, she's like, what, what labels do you need to break off yourself? She kept asking that. I'm like, God, I, I don't feel like I have a label on myself. What is it? What, what do you have for me today? And I'm laying there and I'm praying. And then she said, what do you need to release? And as soon as I asked that question, he spoke so <laughs> profoundly to my heart and said, you need to release your sadness. And I just started weeping. It was like this overflowing, like I couldn't stop. 
And I was like, I know where this is coming from now. I know, I know what it means. I know you want me to release my sadness so I can have more joy. And so that whole like first half of the year was releasing the sadness and learning what his joy actually feels like. And um, that he created me to exude his joy, not just experience it, but to exude it and give it to others as a gift. And so it was just, uh, it was such a profound moment for me um, and coming into more close proximity to my savior. That's awesome. What about for you, Melissa? Story, awaken, anything else that you would add? It's like I couldn't unmute myself. Sorry. I was like trying. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, so, oh, there's so much. There is so much. But um, it's interesting because even though my big story is, you know, the adrenal fatigue and, and, you know, needing that time to rest, but more so it had a lot to do with my family also. And, um, you know, never giving myself that time while hustling to really be present with my family. So God really showed up for me big and like, really was waking me up to say like, you need to like, you may have a calling in what you're doing here, but you also have a calling as a wife and a mother. So that was a big part of my awaken, like, hello, like you're missing out on these things that aren't going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. Like your kids are getting older, you know, you've already missed so much. And um, I already see it at this age where my kids are that they don't need me the way they did five years ago, you know, and God, do I wish I was more present at that point, but at least this awakening has allowed me to like really make a, like make a point to be here for them and to support them in what is happening in their lives now, whether it's soccer games or even, um, even just the talking, just like really making sure that there is that relationship, that connection before it gets to a point where they're off on their own. And it's like, they don't really care anymore to connect, you know? So uh, yeah, that really ties in big, you know, with, with everything, with, especially as far as unhustling and making that part of the whole process. Yeah. And I love that you use the word pause. Cause that's where I was going to go or present, you said present. And I was just getting ready to say, you know, like if you need to narrow it down to two P's for ease for your brain, pause, present, take a pause and be present. And the length of that is going to vary from person to person. The length of that is going to vary from what God has for you in that moment. The length is going to vary from is, are we talking about the awaken within a day or the awaken within your year? So pause, and be present. And I do want to address in case there are those of you listening that are like, well, when I pause, I don't hear anything. When I pause, you know, nothing seems to happen or it's hard for me to pause. It's hard for most people to pause, first of all, because we are bombarded 24 seven with stimuli all around us now in our world more than ever. So yes, it is hard. And usually the hard things are those things that God's actually calling you to lean into closer. So heads up, light bulb moment for you there, you know, like whatever is hard and whatever you catch yourself saying it's hard, chances are lean into that a little bit more, you know, but once you are pausing and you're simply being present, opening yourself up to say, okay, here I am, Lord do with me what you want, say what you want to say. I'm here. I'm ready to listen. Then actually listen and be still and trust that what you're receiving in that moment is, is from him. I also suggest that you pray over your time with intention and dedicate the time, dedicate your thoughts, your mind, your heart, your spirit, all of that, lay your will before him. 
when you are going to be fully expectant that he is going to show up for you and speak. So then once you have that nudge of maybe it is simply that you've had an awakening here on the call today to pause. That is the awakening for you, you know? And so what do you do with that then? That's going to be your trigger that you're now exiting awaken to move into the next phase of the ABCD expansion process, which is to believe. And of course, we will be talking in depth about believe in one of our future episodes on our podcast. So definitely, most definitely don't stop with the awaken. There's so much more for you. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful and it may be tempting to stay there, but that's only a fourth of the process, you know, like you'd be missing out on so much. Amber. I was going to ask Melissa to share her scriptures that came up for her um, going through the awaken process. Yeah. um, And, you know, even while I was going through my whole process before joining um, Uncoached and CEO Flow and everything, um, these never came up for me. So it was amazing when we were really going through the awaken um, story process inside of CEO flow that these were like, they just came to me and it was like, why haven't you been listening to this all along? But um, my first one is be still and know that I am God. Psalm, Psalms 46, 10. Um, And, you know, sometimes we just don't give him the credit and like, we want the control. So I love this one. It just reminds me like he is God. Like I don't have to do it all you know, and then the other one is the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still, which is Exodus 14, 14. Um, And again, I just, it kind of goes along with the first one, just like, we don't need to do it all. We don't need to be in control. We don't need to um, say like, what is going to happen? Like there are times where we need to sit still and listen to what he is telling us to do. Those are so good. Like those are just so good. The ones that I had pulled for today are Mark 631. Come with me by yourselves and get some rest. And I love that one simply because it gives us permission to step away, whether it's for an hour, whether it's for two minutes hiding in the bathroom from children or whether it is for a week or whatever God calls you to, but we've got permission to come be with me, Christ by ourselves and get some rest. And then the other one is Ephesians five fourteen. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Mm-hmm. And it, awakening really is what it's all about. And it's that opportunity of us placing ourselves before him to be shined upon. It's beautiful. Anything else either one of you guys want to add before we wrap up? I don't think so. I think we've Yeah, this has been a really, really fun conversation. I'm so thankful for how it came together for people. And uh, it's, it's always fulfilling to talk about the process ourselves because it puts us back in that place of loving whatever phase that it actually is, you know, um, As we wrap up today, thank you for watching and thank you for listening to our Destiny Culture podcast. We invite you to come and hang out with us for a couple of weeks, actually, of free coaching. We are in the month of November. It's 2021. And... The month of November is all about gratitude, all about thankfulness. And so as a result, we just really felt called to give away out of pure gratitude, the, the support, the space, the coaching, the guidance, the direction, and the clarity that we have that God has given us to the women that are in our space and in our community. So we have opened up designing destiny complimentary coaching. And that begins on November the 29th. So we would love to invite you to participate in that. In order to do that, simply come to our Facebook community, which is called Materialize Impact on Facebook. So 
Um, you can easily find us if you go and search for Materialized Impact on Facebook, and we will be right there and connect you to um, our free coaching weeks. So with that being said, thank you again. We will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye.